Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician. On this video, we're gonna learn our third and final method for solving a quadratic equation, and that is the quadratic formula. A nice formula that will work for any quadratic equation you come across, as long as it's equal to zero. So let's go ahead and dive right into an example problem of how we can use this quadratic formula to help us solve for the x-intercepts of a parabola. So we have this example here, and we're given the equation x squared minus 5x minus 14, and it equals zero. And I wanna first now introduce you to what the quadratic formula is. And let me preface it by saying that it looks very complicated. And it actually looks way more complicated than what it is when you're using it. And when we're gonna be using it, you'll notice that it's very simple arithmetic that we'll be doing. But at first glance, again, just a warning, it does look a little confusing. So as I go ahead and paste that image there, that right there is the quadratic formula. We have x equaling negative b plus or minus the square root of the quantity b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that is a mouthful of a formula. And this works for any quadratic formula that is written in standard form and that is equal to zero. And standard form for a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. And you're noticing, or I hope that you notice, that the quadratic equation here is where we're going to get the numbers that we input into our quadratic formula. We notice that the a term is the coefficient for the x squared term. So whatever number is in front of your x squared term, that's what you'll be placing into this formula for a. Same thing for b. b is the coefficient for the x term. Whatever that number ends up being, that's what you're going to substitute into our quadratic formula for b. And then finally, your constant here at the end, c, that is the final term that we'll be putting into this quadratic formula. So all you have to do is to be able to identify what those three terms are, and then you'll be able to substitute all of those values into that formula and determine what your x-intercepts are. So we have our quadratic equation there. It is x squared minus 5x minus 14. And before we even start dealing with the quadratic formula, it's very important for us that we identify what a equals, what b equals, and what c equals. Because without first identifying those correctly, all of the work in the quadratic formula will be incorrect if we're not able to first get what those are. Well, I'm looking at the x squared term and I know that a is the coefficient for the x squared term. There is no coefficient there. So that means that a here equals one. I now jump to the x term and the coefficient for the x term is not just five, but negative five. There's a minus sign in front of it. So I need to be sure that when I write that coefficient down for b, that I write it as negative five. And the same thing for my constant term, my c term. I cannot just write 14. If I just substitute 14 into that formula, all of my work will be incorrect because our c term there is negative 14. So now that I've identified what my a, b, c terms are, I can now substitute those in and start solving to figure out what my x-intercepts are. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite the quadratic formula, x equals our big fraction bar, and I know that I need to have negative of my b term. Well, my b term is already negative. It's negative five. So when I'm substituting this value in, you're noticing that I'm gonna put parentheses around it because I wanna make sure that I'm including the negative in front that's given to us from the formula and that I'm including the negative inside that's given from our b term from our coefficient of the x term. Okay, be sure that you don't forget that negative term there because in, in a second when we simplify this, it's gonna be very important that both terms, both negative terms are there. Now it says negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. So now I'm gonna take my b term, which was negative five, and I'm going to square it. Minus four times my a term times my c term. 
And you notice I have to keep extending my fraction bar because I never write enough space when I'm doing these. So I have four times A. Well, my A term here is one, and then times the C term. Well, the C term here for us is negative 14. And that's all over the quantity 2A. In this case, two times one. So that's the first step for the quadratic formula, is making sure that you enter in all of your terms, your A, your B, and your C, correctly into the formula, and making sure that you're not dropping any negative signs along the way. Because if we accidentally forgot one negative sign, all of the work that's gonna be coming afterwards would be incorrect. So now what we wanna do once we're here at this step is we wanna to start to simplify this fraction. And this fraction is a mess. There's a lot going on, but there's a lot that we can simplify without really even needing to use a calculator. So let's see what we can do by that. I'm gonna go ahead and draw out again. Whoops, that was not a straight fraction bar line. There we go, much better. And I see that the first term I can simplify says I'm taking the negative of negative five. Well, remember a negative times a negative ends up being a positive. So this term out in front of this root sign is going to just turn into a positive five. And that's why it's so important that when we're writing in our B term initially, that we write it in between parentheses so that we do not forget that there was a negative term there and that the two negatives will turn into a positive. So I have five out in front, plus or minus, the square root of, now we start to simplify. Well, negative five squared is just negative five times negative five. And negative five and negative five will turn into a positive number, which will end up being 25. Now, as I move to the next part here, I see that I have negative four times one times negative 14. Well, those two negatives there, the negative on the 14, the negative on the four, that will now change that into an addition problem. And now I just have to work out four times one times 14. And I think that ends up equaling 56. So now I can write that all underneath two times one, which equals two. Now at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, that looks a lot simpler than what we started with. And you are absolutely correct. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the quadratic formula seems daunting when you first look at it. It's a mess. There's a lot of terms going on there. And once we even input the A and the B and the C term, it looks even more confusing. But just going from the first step to the second step and just going through and simplifying what terms I can see, such as negative of negative five made a positive five. Negative five squared made 25. Negative four times one times negative 14 made positive 56, right? I'm just going through each term and simplifying what I can, not too crazy mathematics going on. And now I have a much simplified fraction that I can work with. And we're not done yet. We wanna keep solving this, keep simplifying so we can figure out what X equals. So I'm gonna go ahead now and write the next line underneath. And I know that I still have the five out in front, I still have plus or minus, and I have a square root. Now, looking at that square root inside, I see that I have 25 plus 56. And 25 and 56, when you add that together, will create 81. And that's still all underneath two. So we are almost done. Look, third line down, we have simplified this so much all we have to do now is start really getting into it and making sure we're reducing all the terms we see. So I'm gonna write the next line, x equals five plus or minus, well, the square root of 81. I think I know what the square root of 81. Think about what number times itself gives you 81, and I believe that that number is nine. So again, I've simplified this fraction to now say five plus or minus nine over two. Now this is the part where it's very important that you pay attention because whenever we are trying to figure out the x-intercepts for a quadratic equation, we normally end up with two different answers. 
Think back to your box and diamond method or the completing the square method. Those two methods usually end up with two different answers or two different equations for you to solve. Because when we think about a parabola crossing the x-axis, it normally crosses at two points. And to show that here, we have in the formula built in the plus and minus symbol. And what's gonna happen now for our equation is it's actually going to break into two separate equations, where for one of them, I'm going to have five plus nine over two, and for the other, I'm going to have five minus nine over two. And this is very important that you do not forget that step, because again, whenever we take a square root, we do end up with a plus and a minus, and we wanna make sure that we don't forget that when we're solving. So now I have two equations, which look like I just need to add the numerators and then divide by the denominator, and I'll know what my x-intercepts are. So let's start with the one on the left. Five plus nine is going to make the numerator 14 over two, and 14 divided by two is seven. So I know that one of the x-intercepts for this quadratic equation is seven. I'll go ahead and solve this last one over here. Five minus nine is going to create negative four over two, and negative four divided by two simplifies to negative two. So I know now that for this quadratic equation, x squared minus five x minus 14, I know that the two x-intercepts are positive seven and negative two. I found that out by using the quadratic formula. There was no need to factor. There was no need to complete the square. I just had to determine what my A, my B, and my C terms were and plug it into that equation. And what's really nice about this formula is that if you come across quadratic equations that can't be factored or you can't complete the square, this formula is always gonna work out for you. It will determine what your two x-intercepts are, what your one x-intercept is, or if it has no x-intercepts, because that might still happen. But this is your fail-safe plan of always figuring out what those are. It's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.